So this is going to be a quick review on polynomials and then how to add, subtract, or multiply with them. So let's just get into it. So first of all, what is a polynomial? So the definition of a polynomial is that it's an expression with real number coefficients and variables with positive whole number exponents. Um, although this might seem like a lot to, to tell you. So I think it's a lot of times easier to just show you what a polynomial is versus what it's not. So here's a few examples of polynomials. 3x plus 2 would work. Um, so it can have variables. It can have whatever numbers you want here. And by the way, technically just a number by itself, that would also be a polynomial. Whatever number you want that we could put that in the family of polynomials, it would just be a constant polynomial. Um, but also things like 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. So things to notice here, right? It's all about what are these exponents here. So x has an invisible exponent of 1, so this one's good to go, as is this one. So let me show you some weirder ones now. So something like pi x to the 7th minus e x to the 6th plus 3.4 x to the 5th. So this would still be a polynomial because you can have, like I said, whatever number you want, you can have it here. Just as a reminder, e is also technically a number. The big thing, though, also that we need is that these exponents here need to be whole numbers, okay? And a polynomial, a lot of times people think it has to be like a whole string of things, but it doesn't. It could also just be like one singular variable with, you know, a whole number exponent. So this whole list here, are, these are all examples of polynomials. So let's talk about what's not a polynomial. So these are like things that look a little odd. So like square root of x plus 2, or so here I've got x to the 2 thirds minus x to the third plus 1. So you have to have a whole number exponent. So this part right here would be the problem. Same thing with square root of x. So if you know anything about square roots, you know that this is technically a uh, exponent of 1 half. So this would not be a polynomial. Another example would be like 4 over x plus 5 over x squared. So technically this being over x and over x squared, these would technically both be negative exponents. So they have to be positive whole numbers. So if they're in the denominator of a fraction, they will not work. Also, if I had something like x to the pi. So again, pi, obviously not a whole number, right? We know it's like a long repeating or non-repeating decimal. So all of these are not polynomials. And so usually I say it's like something kind of weird that's not a polynomial. But the big thing, right, is to make sure that they have whole number exponents, right? Any number you want can go here, but it's got to be whole number, positive whole number exponents. Now, of course, to evaluate a polynomial, it's it's really like evaluating any other expression. So if I asked you to evaluate the polynomial x squared plus 5 for x equals negative 2, what would I do? I would just plug in negative 2, and then I would just work out whatever math I needed to do after that. So this negative 2 is going to be in parentheses, and so since it's a negative number squared, that's really negative 2 times negative 2, so this is going to become... 4 plus 5, so this will equal 9. And then meanwhile, uh, we have this other example. So if I plug in negative 2, so let's see, I have 3 times negative 2 cubed minus 2 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 1. So I've got to work all that out. Um, and you know what? I'll actually give myself a little more space. Okay, so now I've got 3 times negative 2 to the third. So using the order of operations, Negative 2 to the third is going to be negative 8, so this will be 3 times negative 8. And then negative 2 squared, so negative 2 times negative 2 will be positive 4, so I'm going to rewrite this as a positive 4. And then let's see, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, and then plus 1. So really, this is just an order of operations exercise at this point, which by the way, if, you're, if you are rusty on order of operations, I do have a review video on that. Okay, so now 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, this will be minus 8, minus 10, plus 1. So let's see, negative 24 minus 8 is negative 32, let's see, negative 32 minus 10 plus 1, negative 32 minus 10 will be negative 42 plus 1, and negative 42 plus 1 will give me negative 41. Okay, so that is how we can evaluate. So now we're going to talk about a few operations. So first we're going to talk about addition and subtraction. So if you know anything about just adding with like terms, that's really all you have to do with addition and subtraction is just add up any like terms. I am going to say you do want to be careful with subtraction. 
because you will have to um, distribute a negative. So let me just show you what this looks like. So a lot of times when we're adding polynomials, it, it doesn't actually really, like it might not even register to you that we're working with polynomials. But the question I get the most often, like if I show a problem like this, is students will say, do I need those parentheses? So the reason why there is a set of parentheses is to differentiate this is one polynomial and this is a second polynomial. That's really it. But the question of do I need the parentheses, I mean, technically, no, you don't. So in a problem like this one here, the parentheses, it's just really there to show that they're two different polynomials. But let's contrast that to this other example here. So once again, so I have one polynomial in this set of the parentheses and another polynomial here. But what makes this a little trickier is that we have the minus sign here. And I will tell you that usually like the minus sign can be a lot of people's downfall because they'll think too fast with this. So that's kind of the, the main tip that I want to give here. So let me just separate these. Oh, let's see. Um, I guess we can just add the first one. So I've got 3x squared, so I'm just going to look for any like terms. So 5x squared would be the other like term. So let's see. Oops, let me change my color here. So I've got 3x squared and 5x squared. Those are like terms. 5x and negative 2x are like terms. And then let's see. I'll just reuse the green. Um, so 7 and negative 3 are going to be like terms. So 3x squared plus 5x squared will be 8x squared. 5x minus 2x will be 3x. And then 7 minus 3 is going to be 4. So there's the first one. But now for the second one, so here's the thing. I would be careful about this. I would first force myself to distribute this negative because the downfall I most commonly see with this is that people just think too fast with this and end up mixing up the like terms. So I'm going to have 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 1 minus 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. So that is the way that I would recommend that you do that because now you have distributed and you will not make that, that common error. So now we can do the same thing, right? So I've got these are like terms. Uh, let's see, these are like terms, these are like terms, and these are like terms. So now I can just really collect those like terms. So 5x cubed minus 4x cubed will leave me with x cubed. Negative 2x squared minus 2x squared will give me minus 4x squared. 5x plus 7x will give me 12x, and 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2. So that's all that there really is for that one. Um, if you want to just try this at home, I have one more example like this. So I'm a big fan of saying math is not a spectator sport. So I think you should just try and make sure that you've got this down before we move on to the next topic. So pause, hit, pause here, give it a try, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I am, once again, I'm going to practice what I preach. And I'm going to write this out with the distributed minus sign. So this becomes minus 2x cubed. It's terrible cubed minus 2x plus 8. So there's everything. So now if I go through it, I look for my like terms. So like 4x squared does not have another like term. So that's it for that one. And then 2x cubed and 2x cubed. So actually, those are going to drop out entirely. So I can just write that like that. And then let's see, 2x squared um, has no other like term again. And 5x and 2x are going to go together. And then finally, I have this 6 and this 8. So let's see. I am left with 5x to the 4th minus 2x squared. And then let's see, the 2x cubed dropped out, right? And then I've got 5x plus 2x, so that's 3x. And then negative 6x plus 8 will give me positive 2, right? 8 is bigger than negative 6, so this needs to end up positive. Okay, so that is addition and subtraction. So now we're just going to talk about multiplication. So multiplication with polynomials can mean a couple different things. So kind of the nice easy case would be like these two problems here. So this idea of I have a single term poly polynomial, which we call a monomial, mono for one. Um, this can just be distributed into a set of parentheses. And so then really from here, you are just dealing with exponent rules. So Remember, there is an invisible one right here, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numbers together. So for instance, I'll take 3x times 4x cubed. So 3 times 4 is 12. And then I add up the exponents. So I have x to the first and x squared, so that becomes x cubed. And then for my next term, so 3 times 5 is 15. And then I have x squared, or sorry, this will be x to the first and x to the first. So those add up together to become x squared. And then this last one will be just minus 3x. So you just have to add up the exponents. That's like one of the exponent rules, right? And I have a whole video that reviews exponent rules, by the way, if you want to check that out. But why don't you try this one here just to make sure that you're good on it and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so this is going to become 5x to the fifth, again, adding the exponents, minus 10x to the fourth plus 20x cubed. So now let's talk about a slightly more interesting case of working with polynomials. Um, so I've got two entire polynomials that I'm multiplying together. And the phrase that I always hear when I have this situation is to FOIL. So I don't actually love the term FOIL. Uh, so FOIL is, I don't know if all countries use this, but in the States we like to use the term FOIL. So it stands for first, outside, inside, last. I actually don't like this because this breaks down if you have any other situation besides the one that we're looking at here. So I'm going to actually just show you a different thing that does FOIL things for those of you that love the term FOIL, but I'm just going to show you a slightly different way to think about this so that you can apply this method to anything. So here is what we're trying to do. I am trying to multiply everything in here, really everything in here by everything in here once. So. I'm going to just go step by step. So I'm going to start with 3x. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to take 3x times 5x. So 3x times 5x is going to give me 15x squared. Okay. And then I'm going to just continue on with the 3x and I'm going to multiply it by the 2. So this will be 3x times negative 2. So that'll be minus 6x. And now look what's happened. I took everything in here times the first term. Okay. So now we can pivot and now we can multiply everything in here by this term. So now I'm going to take one times the five X. So that's going to be plus five X and then one times the negative two. So that's going to be negative two. So here's everything that I'm left with. And so, yes, this is a hundred percent foil, but like I said, hold, hold on for a second. If you really love that phrase, I'm going to show you why that would break down in a moment. So now I have everything and from here I just collect my like terms, okay? So this becomes 15x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, so let's contrast that now to this example. And this is why FOIL breaks down. Because FOIL only works if you have two terms here and two terms here. And really at the end of the day what we're trying to do when we're multiplying polynomials is we're trying to multiply everything in one polynomial by everything in the other polynomial. Now you also have some choices on like which way you want to multiply this. So if you wanted to flip flop this, that the two X minus four came first and the, the longer one came second, that's fine. I'm just going to roll with this as it is. Okay. But it's the same idea. So I'm going to take this term here and I'm going to multiply it by everything in here to start. Okay. So I'm going to take, oops, sorry. Uh, I'm going to take this term times the two X. So that's going to be two X cubed. And then I'm going to take X squared times the negative four. So that's going to be minus four X squared. And so now, right, I've multiplied this term times everything in here so I can keep going. So now I'll take the five X times the two X. So that's going to become 10 X squared. And then I will take the five X, times the negative four. So that'll become minus 20 X. Okay. And continuing on. So now I took five X times everything in here. So now I just move on to the three. So three times two X will give me six X and let's see. And then we'll do two X or sorry, three times the negative four and that'll be negative 12. So there's everything now. And again, it's just this idea. It's a very simple idea of everything in here by everything in here. So 
once you get used to this, you don't need to draw the lines, but I find sometimes when people are rusty on this, it's helpful just to have the visual markers so that they can see, oh yeah, there were two terms in here and I've drawn two, two lines. Two terms in here, I drew my two lines. Like you can kind of more easily track it, but no, you, you don't have to draw those lines all the time. So now this will be two X cubed plus six X squared minus 14 X minus 12. So that will be the final answer. And by the way, if you're finding this helpful so far, um, maybe consider hitting that like button or hitting the subscribe button. That would be super cool. So just to make sure that you've got this now, so I've got a, just a couple of examples that you can practice alongside me. So first, for this first one, I just have two terms and two terms. So if you wanna pause the video, I think that's the best way for you to learn this. So pause here, give it a try, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so first I'm gonna take the three X times the five X. So that's gonna be 15 X squared. And then I'll take the three X times the negative two. So that'll be minus six X. Okay. So now I need to take this four times this five X. So that'll be 20 X. And then I'll take this four times negative two. And so four times negative two will be negative eight. So there's everything. So this will become 15x squared plus 14 minus eight. Okay, so I have another one, five x plus three times two x minus one. So again, pause, give it a try. Let's just make sure you're good on this. Hit play when you think you've got it. Okay, so let's see. So I'll take five x times two x, so that'll be 10 x squared. And then I'll take five x times negative one, so it'll be minus five x. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So this will be 10x squared plus x minus 3. Okay, so now I've got a slightly more complicated one. So I've got x squared plus 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 1. So this is a really good one to test yourself with. Um, so again, pause. Remember, you'll learn more from this if you actually try it. To play when you think you've got it. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking x squared times 3x, so that's going to be 3x cubed, and then x squared times negative 1, so it'll be minus x squared. So now I'm going to move on to the next term, so this 3x. So I'll take 3x times 3x, so that's going to be 9x squared, and then I'll take 3x times negative 1, so that's minus 3x. Then I've got four times three X, so that's 12 X. And finally, I've got four times negative one, so that's negative four. So if I collect my like terms, I get three X cubed, let's see, plus eight X squared plus nine X minus four. All right, cool. So if you did good on that, that's awesome. Um, if you feel like you need more practice on that, I do have another practice video, so just throwing that out there. And I have one more type of polynomial problem that I wanna talk about. So this is actually one where the mistake is so common. This is one of the few things that has like a special name for it. So this is a multiplication problem. Um, it is not equal to three X squared plus one. A lot of times people will just try to like square part of this and square part of this. So it doesn't work like that. In fact, if you were to do something like that um, or something similar to that, it would be called the freshman's dream. That's, it's like a, it's, it's just a really common error in math that it has its own name. So instead, let's think about what does it mean to square something? That means you take something times itself. So the first thing you wanna do is if you have a polynomial squared, you wanna write it like this because then you can really clearly see, right? This is definitely a multiplication problem. So heads up on that. And then um, I, I'll skip the colors this time. I'll just take three X times three X. So that's gonna be nine X squared. Three X times one is three X. One times three X is three X. And then one times one is one. So this equals nine X squared plus six X plus one. Now it is possible that you could like find a book or another YouTube channel that would talk about there being a formula to remember for this. Sure. There's a formula you could remember for this, but I will say this much. Um, 
I hate having to remember extra formulas. <laughs> I have the memory of a hamster. There's only so much space in my brain. This is a consistent process that I know I can just bust out versus having to remember a formula. So one other thing I just wanted to say about that. Okay, so now I just wanna remind you, you can't master math by watching a ton of YouTube videos. You do have to practice it. So my review videos come with companion additional practice problems. So you can get a PDF of practice problems with an answer key, and then I have another video showing you how to work out any of those problems. So if you're trying to master this for whatever reason, I'd say go and check that material out next. And all of this is organized, by the way, at DividingConquerMath.com, and you can go to the review section. And my review series, by the way, has many other topics in it. So each topic has a refresher video, that's what this is, and then the practice problems and worked out solutions. So each topic is kind of like got a whole crash course re refresher if you are trying to pick up those skills again for whatever reason. And it's all free, DividingConquerMath.com, just go to the review section. So I am gonna leave it at that and I will talk to you guys in a